I'm literally going to do it the way that you just said it. I like I'm gonna it. Go, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I'm going to have to look right at this look camera. At What'd you say? I said, look at his hat. I know. He's Wait. awesome. Why is it awesome? <laughs> He's ready to go. He can wear green because he has a blue background. That's right. Everybody, this is my first time on Fretboard TV. My name is Mitch Legro. I am here today with our sales guru, Chris Ellison, sitting across the way from me, and a very special guest this week. We've got Joe Frank from the Folding Warehouse here in Cincinnati. Uh, Joe, it's originally out of Detroit, right? We'll get into that, but yes, perfect. So Joe's here in Cincinnati, repping Folding Warehouse, and then to my left, uh, Jim Klosterman. Greetings. He's going to be the phantom voice today. Yeah, I'm, I'm behind the scenes. Usually I'm the phantom voice, but uh, that's going to be Jim. So <laughs> still four people on this episode, but all right, gentlemen. Joe is the co-owner and operator at Foling Warehouse. Joe, can you tell the people what is Foling? Yeah, Foling. So Foling is uh, the combination of football bowling. It's the collaboration of two, what I think, are two of the best American sports out there. Uh, you got football, bowling, it's a little bit of cornhole, some horseshoes, you want to throw in some beer pong, you can. Um, but you know, the object of the game with uh, a football, the object is to throw the football and knock down 10 of your opponent's bowling pins, real bowling pins, just like we have right here, um, before they knock yours down. So it's, uh, the game started uh, as a tailgate game in Detroit. A good friend of ours, Chris Hutt is his name, was up in Detroit, Michigan. Hamtramck is the uh, area where it came from. And bowling started, honestly, it was an accident. It was uh, a tailgate game that, that went wrong. So oh, wow. Chris took this, uh, he wanted to have a real bowling alley at Indianapolis 500. You been to the Indy 500 at all? Yeah, yeah, so, actually. So he's got a big tailgate area. He's been doing it for years. And every year, you know, in Detroit, they, uh, they try to up their game and try to have a better tailgate every single year. So on this particular year, they want to have a bowling alley. So he makes a legit two-size bowling alley, brings it down from Detroit all the way to Indianapolis, sets awesome. it up, and 17-pound bowling ball throws it down the uh, throws it down the bowling alley, hits the pins, and forgets to build a backstop. There's nothing stopping this bowling ball. So it's going right <laughs> through the pins. It's hitting other tailgates. That's awesome. It's hitting other people. And, you know, after, when you have a 17-pound bowling ball, there's not really much you can do. So he chalked it up literally. Like they could not prevent the bowling ball from hitting other people. So uh, <laughs> chalked it up as a tailgate that went bad. And uh, later that day, you know, have a few drinks in them, just throwing the football around. The bowling alley is still set up with the pins. And he throws the bowling ball, I'm sorry, throws, throws the football, and the football hits the bowling pins that are uh, set up that's still awesome. in the bowling alley. And boom, that's how bowling started. They, um, they knew they had something right there. They kind of got together and said, hey, what if we put bowling pins on both sides? And it's set up just like cornhole. So 48 feet apart, the, a folding lane is the exact length of a bowling alley. Okay. And um, okay. everything's to scale from that standpoint. So that's it, that's how it started back in, this was 2001, so we're going back a long way. So we call him Chut, by the way, Chris Hutt. And uh, he's, the, he's the godfather, the founder of folding. So he, he had this game and it became kind of like a road show for him. He was going to bars and restaurants and Lions tailgates and just taking it to different events throughout Detroit. This is from 2001 to 2015. And uh, 2015, he had such a following and everyone was telling him like, hey, you gotta do something with this, especially in the winter time, you can't, you can't play. So he, he built a folding warehouse and um, it was purely, you know, one of those entrepreneurial ventures to say like, see if this thing works put two bars in there. He had 20 lanes that he originated with. He has 30 today. And um, put this thing together and it was like the hottest thing in Detroit. He's, he's won multiple That's awards, awesome. Entrepreneur of the Year, Best Business, Best Night Out in Detroit. So the first time I went up to check it out, I was like blown away by this. And yeah. So there's a, another story I'll get into later about how I got involved. But first time I saw him like Cincinnati needs this like we're we're a cornhole city this 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 would do so well here so uh, at the time he's still working on you know protecting the game legally making sure folding was trademarked properly all the copyrights and getting everything as close to patentable as possible for a game 
and he called us up in 2017 and said hey we're ready to go if you want to start the first franchise we're going to franchise this thing uh, if you want to start the first franchise up in Cincinnati we're good and uh, he's I said hey send me send me some information send me some financials specifically and he was crushing it I mean you guys know how well alcohol does and he's got cover charges at the door and um, I, we were, I was all in, and as um, soon as I saw this thing, I knew I knew it would do well here. So, jumped on board, quit my day job, found four buddies to, to help invest in this, um, and boom! How'd you how'd house. you find that space? Yeah, it's a great question. So, space is the hardest piece to find. Um, there's three barriers to entry. One is the space. Two is uh, the liquor license. And three is parking. You know, those are those are three challenges. So, so real quick, the space is in Oakley, by the way. Tell them exactly right. where it is. So it's twenty nine forty Highland Avenue in Oakley. It feels like Pleasant Ridge. It feels like Norwood. We are zoned Oakley. We're proud to be in Oakley. We wave that uh, Oakley flag every day. We love having Pleasant Ridge in. We love having Norwood in. But uh, it's it's right in that area, right on the other side of seventy one, um, off Ridge Road in the corner of Highland and Ridge. So it's a little tough place to find, but going back to your question, I mean that's that's why it's uh, we needed we needed at least forty thousand square foot. We have forty seven thousand square feet. Ideally, if I could make it bigger, I would. I mean we've had some sellout nights in the winter time where we had to unfortunately let you know couldn't let people in. So if I could go sixty thousand square feet, I would have. But the issue is parking. The city of Cincinnati says um, for zoning purposes for a bowling alley for every lane you have in a bowling alley and the city of Cincinnati didn't know how to zone us so they they classified us as a bowling alley yeah so uh for every lane you have to have five parking spots so oh, wow. we have 30 yeah. lanes right so I'm looking at 150 right. spots so pff, downtown out of the question you know anything around downtown I wanted Clifton I wanted to be close to Xavier UC I wanted to be like in prime time Cincinnati couldn't happen so we were looking at some stuff in the burbs and it just never felt right and we had some we had a really good place in evendale we looked at some stuff in sharonville uh some stuff in blue ash but for our crowd we really wanted to get that you know kentucky crowd up we wanted to make sure it was accessible for everybody so oakley is pretty centralized when the place popped up it's hidden it's off the beaten path but it's a it's a real clean spot and it, it fit kind of what I was looking for. It's so. a destination that you hang out at too for a few hours. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely. got what you need. It's it's got plenty of space, so you and your group can kind of fall into whatever corner you know where you want to play. Yes. you know, and hang out there. And the, obviously, the beer, which we'll get into, is uh, extensive enough that you, anybody can find something to drink, which is great. So, Pe people always ask me what what this building was before it was a brewery. Yeah. So I'm curious yeah. as to what a forty what was going on in the 47,000 square foot building before it's crazy. you took it over. It's crazy Jimmy asked that because I get that question asked all the time. Yeah, yeah, and, I uh, bet. So the company's called Nehemiah, and they were in there, and Nehemiah's claim the fame is the boogie wipes. They make the uh, the boogie wipes for kids when they have like, <laughs> and, and I don't know the whole story. I, I was told it was like an old P&G product, and then Nehemiah kind of bought it out, and I don't know the facts behind that. But what Nehemiah's claim the fame is, is they hire, uh, people who have been incarcerated, incarcerated and they put them to work. So that's kind of what they do. So it's funny when people from the building come in and say, hey, I used to work here. You know, my, I always want to be like, so what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your background? What were you in why, for? Why were you <laughs> Actually, I, I think it would probably be a good exercise at some point to talk about exactly how the game is played and yeah. you do that every single night so for you it's just like oh my gosh this is just me on repeat no but no. um for somebody that doesn't know the experience could you like explain the rule set and what you know what we're really trying to do including the defensive elements of the game yeah. which are some of my favorite yeah no so so there's 30 lanes right and uh again the object of the game is knock your opponent's pins down before they knock your pins down so each side there's two platforms six by eight sheets of plywood they're they're put built up on platforms real bowling pins 10 pins on each side we have a guy's line and we have a ladies line uh, the ladies line is just it's an eight foot advantage uh we call it the it's like the ladies tees in golf right mm -hmm. try to make it so it's even for uh both genders and we allow one-on-one -on -one uh, up to five on five. Most people play two on two. It's typically like cornhole setup, um, but we we have some parties that come in and and play five on five all the time. So that's the max that we allow on one lane is ten people. So when you're on the same team, you're on the same. You stay on the same side. 
Correct. Which so is, unlike cornhole, you're right, where your opponent's on the opposite side. Again, going back to kind of that beer pong feel, uh, your teams are on the same side. So team A throws a the football. Their object is to hit as many pins down as possible. Uh, they're going to either hit or, pit, hit or miss. Team B will pick the football up. They will throw back. They will hit or miss. And then you rotate partners on your team, just going back and forth, back and forth, until one team knocks down all the pins. It, it sounds pretty simple, but it's actually really challenging. Well, yeah, because you, you don't have to throw the ball traditionally. No. You can throw the ball how, however you want to throw the ball. And I've That's seen correct. some pretty amazing oh, yeah. throws that people do with, with yeah. the football because it's not necessarily about having the perfect spiral. You can lob it up. You can underhand it. You can, you can roll the ball. Yes. I mean, we've seen have, Were you there that night? With yeah, the, it was amazing. Yeah, we Absolutely got upset amazing. by that team. Yeah, the kid who like he uh, was West bowling, he was bowling a football. Yeah. It was Westside Brewery. They yeah, brought they in <laughs> a literally a bowler. Yeah, and I've never seen that. And he was outstanding. He almost he, went to the finals. He he yeah. nailed it all night long. It, it was, was amazing. It was it's the, the odds are, I mean, it's the it's impossible, right. and he figured it out. So yeah. Well, and that's the the unique unique thing about the game. It's not really about being able to spiral the football like you've been playing football right. through high school football. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, it's not. Mm. You see those guys and you get intimidated because it's like, wow, this guy's gonna, he can he can yeah. rip the ball, right? But I've seen so many times it's, where it, it doesn't even it's matter. It's all about the the loft. Right. You got it. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. It's Joe, about. Me, it's <laughs> about well, I'm a lofter. You, I, you just kind of drop. Yeah, the Mitch does have a nice style. He yeah. does. He drops the. There's he drops them in. But it it and when Joe explains the game, every time you explain the game, you're like a pin down is a pin down. Correct. So, so what does that mean in terms of gameplay? What I mean. Yeah, that's that's one of the challenges. So when we're busy and we have 30 lanes, you know, back in January, February, March, prior to COVID, uh, we were sold out Friday, Saturday nights, every night. And, you know, 30 lanes of people throwing footballs, it's, you know, eight feet apart. There's a lot of footballs going around. So part of the game, the defensive piece of the game, which I like, we call it, we call it collateral damage. When a football from another lane comes into your pins. So you're right, a pin down is a pin down no matter how it happens. So you're allowed to touch the football once it's past the board. You know, but you got to let it, in the playing area, you got to let it do its thing. So if it's bounced around on the board, you can't touch it. But once it's past the playing area, once it goes past the guy's line, which is the back of the board, uh, you can grab it. A lot of times, guys that throw really hard throw into the fence and it bounces back. So, you know, there's some defense to the game. But when a neighboring football comes in, you're allowed to block that anywhere you like. So it, there is a very big defensive component to the game. And people get mad in our league nights. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, collateral damage is like the number one thing. Like, you have to, when one guy's throwing, the other guy's playing defense. And when that guy's not doing a good job playing defense, you get mad at him. He's like, what? dude, you got one job. <laughs> Don't let neighboring <laughs> footballs into your pins. So it's, it's definitely a part of the game that makes it interesting. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So we need to get into talking about, you know, private events. And That's what I was yeah. going to say, go yeah. into right, right, right Let's there. Let's talk cool. about, you know, use of that space when it's not the, the general public. You know, what is, what is the benefit of having... You know, space like yours and a, and a game like yours for team building and things of that nature. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you this: the space is what I think makes our place so unique, and uh, the game is great. Don't get me wrong; the bar is awesome. We got some great beers, like fretboard beers inside there. Uh, but the space is really what makes it so unique. I mean, how often do you get to go to a forty-seven thousand square foot warehouse, drink, uh, bring in whatever size group you want? I mean, we've had GEs brought in four hundred people before for a corporate event. Uh, we, we, everything down to 10 people of the 400 people we've had major size groups in there and that's what makes it so cool it's a it's a very laid-back environment you know that when you're when you're drinking in a warehouse you know it, it doesn't have that like hey I gotta be careful I don't want to spill my beer and, and your kids can run around a little bit and there's just a ton of space so it, right. it's a neat feeling and when it's packed it doesn't even feel that packed but when it's packed there's a lot of energy inside the place what makes it really cool yeah. Well, Joe, how has COVID impacted the business in regards to these private events and, and things of that nature? And, and how has your business model adjusted to, to you know, cope with that? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with the adjustment piece because that's, that's kind of a big thing right now. I, mean, we're, I, I feel like we're great, a very safe venue right now and uh, no different than you guys. I mean, you guys have a lot of space here too. We have, we have a ton of space. So we're doing every other lane. You know, so we're, we went from 15 lanes, I'm sorry, we went from 30 lanes uh, to 15 lanes. 
which has been a big uh, big cut for us. But that, that gives everybody you know m a lot of space to play. So social distancing is not an issue no, at our no. place at all. You know, internally we have all the safety precautions. We're sanitizing things. I mean, some of the things are actually good. I mean, think about this in the flu season. We had over a thousand people in there on a Saturday night. These are like walk-ins off the street. Everyone's touching the footballs. Everyone's throwing, right. going home. I mean, now, I mean, you look back at it and you're like, that was disgusting. Right. You know, now, <laughs> <laughs> it's no different than going to any bowling place, though, yeah. and you're just I like, know. you know, ugh. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if COVID's ball. done anything, it's, it's created a, more awareness yeah. for hand washing and san sanitizing and... Sure. You know, I mean, uh, those simple you're, things that exactly. we should all have been doing anyways, right? I mean, that's the... We didn't have any, not one hand sanitizer station in the entire place, right? I mean, and no one ever complained. No one ever said anything. Right. Now I have 15. You know, and that's a good thing. We need that. We sanitize. We don't sanitize. We disinfect every football after every single game. So we do the pins. I mean, think about your hands are touching the pins, putting them back on the spot. Right. Uh, we, we disinfect with hospital grade, very strong hospital grade disinfectant every single game. So uh, I shouldn't say game, but every group that comes in. You know, so the biggest thing for me, and I was on Channel 12 News, we talked about this. You know, it's, it's one thing when, you know, as a business owner, you, you plan for ups and downs. You know, you plan for seasonality. Right. But how do you plan for three months of shutdown? Yeah. You know, how do you, you don't, you don't plan you for don't. that. You, you can't. You take it. And you adapt. You know, we meet every week and talk about like, hey, what are we gonna do from a sales standpoint? And the biggest thing is you gotta get creative. I mean, I called Chris up and said, hey, we were, yeah. we were in the middle of a brainstorming meeting. Like, how do we get more exposure? How do we let people know we're open? And I called Chris up and said, hey, what, what if we brought following the fretboard? And he, he was like, I love it. And my hope is that people, you know, I'm, what's in it for me is exposure. Well, what's in it for you guys is I hope we entertain your guests and you know, they have a great time. Yeah, and make, it, make it an event and make yeah. it something fun and exciting to do during these crazy yeah. times, right? Yeah. Uh, we should talk about the, um, the brewery tournaments that you've yeah. run, you know, that Chris and I have taken place yeah. in. And, uh, Jim needs to get there. Yeah, Jim has never been. We'll bring Jim this time. We talked about it the other day. No, no you're going fully. No you're going to love it. We need you. No like, excuses. Jim I enters that door. I brought, I brought Kyle, I brought the Kyle Haggett trio this past time and Kyle, Kyle and I played together, and we were on fire. Yes. We hit three rebuttals in a row. Yes. Like, we were hitting balls. We were knocking pins down. But it didn't even matter because it can turn like that. Right. Game. <laughs> I mean, that's the cool thing okay. about, the, about the game. And I, but I, I think, speaking of, of the game and those tournaments, it's one of those uh, events that when you host those brewery ones, I think it's so unique. And there, there are other places that do brewery competitive you know interbrewery competitive tournaments of different kinds but i think this one is the most successful or in the most fun because it's something that a lot of people don't aren't professionals at they're not really specialized yeah. at this game right. right and so they may know how to throw a football or whatever but it but it almost eat the playing field when you're walking in as long as you have somebody who's thrown a football a few times the, the playing field is pretty pretty even and then all it takes is that one person who just throws that lucky that lucky throw so it's right it's not as as much as it gets competitive at times it's not um it's not as cutthroat as like you know i love basketball personally right if i was playing in a basketball tournament i would want to play as hard as i could and i would I would probably take it personal if I, you know, lost or I would I would right. be hard on my teammates or something like that, right? Just yeah. it, and it's stupid. But when it comes to foaling, it's like, all right, if I lose, these guys are fellow brewery, you know, uh, employees. It's really cool that we're all here together and, and it brings the, that community together, that little micro community together. I think the whole thing brings people together. I, yeah. I think that's a unique experience. I think that's why the corporate events make complete sense for your business. I mean, it bring it, 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 it creates that that bonding that people want to feel. I mean, it, you could get you could be put on a team with somebody you've never put, met in your entire life, and you would feel more connected to that person after playing one round of, of foaling than yeah. you would just sitting at a table for ten minutes. It's so funny you say that. So going back to cool? the corporate side, we had a, a group came in in IT department, right? So you can picture your typical IT department. Oh yeah, I've and been there. And they said, hey, our last group function, we went to 16-bit thinking like, hey, these are all computer guys, we're gonna go play some video games. And they said everybody went to a video game and there was zero socializing, not one person spoke right. to each other. 
So then she brought them out of their element, which is fulling, and it was definitely an adjustment for them. But they had a blast. She was the first time she's ever seen people collaborate and talk and you know share stories and actually just mingle. And the game kind of forces that. And I think the Battle of the Breweries is the same way. Right. Um, I mean, we came up with bunk beer during the Battle of the Breweries, which really? I think is pretty cool. Right. You know, we were just sitting there and I'm like, hey, I gotta get, I gotta get a better house beer on draft. And um, and that's kind of how that came about. And there's some really neat guys. I mean, Dell Hall is one that we talk oh, about yeah. all the time. I mean, I would never know who that guy is. He's like a... He puts his bandana on and he gets oh, hardcore. He's, he's, he goes he's, all out. Mitch, you know. <laughs> he's crazy. He's a monster. So. Yeah. <laughs> Jim not being there, just hearing all about this, what do you think our number one injury is inside the, oh, the playing geez, area? Um, what do you, I, I would think somebody slips or trips. Uh, or slips getting or trips knocked. Pin. Uh, slips That's, or trips or gets knocked in the head with the football. Mitch? <laughs> Do you have an answer already? I would say slips or trips on a pin because you put the pins, not everybody stacks them up nicely yeah, behind them. Some people just let them, let them lay around. And then what, is, what was your other idea, though? Because uh, no, you get, you just get, just bonk, get, you get bonked in the head. Yeah, you get bonked in the head. That's yeah. the typical response. Yeah, I would, I would think that it would be a, like a twisted ankle on a pin, too, personally. Odds are high for that, too. We've not had any of that, believe it or not. What is uh, it? The number one is when guys are standing there and they're talking to somebody else, drinking a beer. Chip a tooth on the side of the glass. <laughs> groin. Football to the groin. Oh. And oh. it happens a lot. Oh. And it's, it's, it's sad, but it's funny at the same time because they always recover. <laughs> because they always recover. Yeah. You'll see guys on the ground, and I'm like, I guarantee you got hit in the groin area. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, a, that's the thing. You never, like, sometimes the people on the other end, they're not paying attention to what you're doing. They just throw. Like, I know. Which yeah. I, I think it, you should try to make some sort of, hey, yeah. all right, here we go, eye contact or something. But yeah, in this case, part of football. it is strategy, though, that if you catch your opponents off guard and they're not ready, then it's like, that's on you. But at the same time, you want to be cordial. And, you know, you're, like, a yeah. good person's instinct is to be like, I'm about to throw the ball <laughs> right but at the same time if they're just like oh, i'm gonna turn my back and i'm gonna sit my beer it's like i'm throwing the ball right now yeah. because no one's playing defense or whatever's going on you know so it's a social sport I man that's what it's for yeah right? exactly so <laughs> it was nice so so i have a question yeah we, we, we've got this big bowling pin up here and it says bonk and what i want to oh, talk yeah. about the beer i really want to talk yeah. about the beer and we'll get we'll get to talking about the beer but yeah. what is a bonk and how does that yeah. relate to folding warehouse? Great question. So bonk is kind of the signature throw. And bonks are hard. We get about one or two a night, uh, which which is more popular than strikes. Strikes are like, I call them unicorns. They just don't happen. But we have so far for this year from January 1st till now, we keep track of every strike and bonk. And we have had 13 strikes uh, going into, we're in July right now. So strikes are rare, but we get about one or two bonks a night. And a bonk is when... First throw of the game. It's got to be the team's first throw. So whoever decides to throw first, when they hit the five pin, which is the middle pin, so if you put all the pins together in the pyramid, and that middle pin, it hits the five pin, and that five pin bonks out, and no other pins go down. It's an automatic win for that team. So the challenge is to just get that five pin out of the triangle and bonk it out. And, uh, and that's, our, that's our signature. That's what uh, you get the bonk horn, which is super cool. So bonk horn picture the loudest train horn you've ever heard uh, <laughs> on an air compressor you go up inside the bar you pull on this handle it used to be a bowling pin but we had so many people pull it they broke it and uh, now we just have like a normal handle that you pull on it and this train horn goes off That's and awesome. it's it's intense you can feel it inside yeah. it's like a hockey game almost when uh, someone scores a goal so uh, that's what's cool we do some social media stuff with it and you know, what we're really proud of, honestly, is our bonk beer that you guys make for us, which is outstanding. And, we, you know, I, I'm involved as much as I can. Most people that come to the warehouse are new. We do, we're starting to get some repeat business, but when people come in there new, I go in and explain the game to them. And the one thing I always tell them, I was on the bonk, and I always tell them, hey, when, if you want to try something new, light, refreshing, crushable type beer, uh, go to the draft line, grab a bonk beer, I think you'll enjoy it. And nine times out of 10, they do. It's usually that Miller Light, Bud Light type drinker, but there's somebody that's like an untapped guy that's like, oh, I've never had that before. Yeah. You know, they, they hit it too. They're looking for that. Oh, yeah. That check mark to get <laughs> They do. They do. And I've seen it untapped. It's coming across. I don't know if you guys put that on there, but it's definitely on there. 
Anyway, it's it's catching on. Uh, Mitch made an awesome sign for us that I'm really excited to put up tonight. Just just point on the green screen and I'll put it on the yes. right there. There's this the sign. sign. This sign's awesome. <laughs> we can finally let people know beer. about the long beer. I mean, that's the biggest issue. Bowling pin definitely grabs attention. It's a beautiful bowling pin, but uh, when we can get we can let people know it's our house beer. And honestly, when we say fretboard makes it, that's when it's like, oh, really? So it's pretty cool. So I, uh, and I definitely make sure they know like, this is not just any beer, like this is house beer fretboard made for us. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's continue to talk about beer. Yes. I want to talk about the mystery beer machine ah. a little bit, because that's yeah, also what, something that tell is- Tell us uh, about the mystery beer machine. Yeah. <laughs> So this is probably our number one attraction, really. I mean, the game, I have more people that call up and ask about the mystery beer machine and people that show up and say, where's the mystery beer machine at? So it's a basic concept. I mean, this is not anything too, too creative, <laughs> but it's an old Coke machine. And we have two of them, one each bar. And uh, we just took out, you know, we took out everything and put in a, a two, three, four and five dollar beer. It's behind the bar, so a lot of people think that you can just put money in it and get their beer, but no, the bartender gets it for you. And the $2 beer is literally the cheapest beer I can buy in the state of Ohio. Like, I've told my distributors, <laughs> like, whatever you got, load me up. And college kids come in all the time. I get, I get older people all the time, put down a $20 bill, give me 10 mystery, $2 mysteries. And we have 15 different beers inside the $2. Uh, hams, Natty Light, we got some Huda Pole, we <laughs> have uh, Steel Reserves, probably one of the nasty ones, Colt 45s in there. In your opinion, what's the best of the $2 beers? In my opinion, I like Old Milwaukee. Okay. There is a beautiful blonde. Oh, you like blonde. the Beast. He likes no, the beast. that's not the Beast. That's, oh, no. that's oh, wait, Milwaukee's wait, best. No, oh, 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 the that's best. That's Milwaukee's best. Uh, yeah. Old, old so we're Milwaukee. not even talking about the best. The no. Is the old, is the old Milwaukee with the one with the pinup girl on it? Yes. That's, that's actually, what I was going to say. That's actually not a bad beer. It's not. No, it's not at all. And Keystone's in there, which is pretty good. Um, but that old Milwaukee, when she comes out, I look at that beautiful blonde. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're like, thank God I got that one yes, <laughs> instead of hams. That's the one I go for. Oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. That's and so Colt 45 funny. and Steel Reserve are the two. I can't believe Colt 45's in there. I remember oh, somebody got one of those when we, were, when we were there last time playing, and it wasn't one of our teammates or our brewery members, but somebody was like, yeah, I just got this Colt 45 out of, <laughs> out of the Mr. Machine. I was like, what is nothing better. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'm I wish so there was more 12 ounce cans that, you know, right. some of the best brands, they don't make them at 12 ounce yeah, cans. Yeah, for sure. I like to get Red Dog and they don't, they don't have that. Was that you, Chris? Was, were you Red Dog? Somebody's talking me. about that, that was, was you, Jim. Yeah, yeah, that was me. I had uh, many, many uh, outings with Mr. <laughs> Red Dog oh, wow. I never had back in the day. Awesome. And, yeah. and they just, uh, you know, you don't, the hangovers are different with cheap beer. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's been a while. Steel the Reserve is are, like 8%. Uh, much more intense. Wait, what? Steel Reserve is an 8.2% beer. And it's a $2 beer for You're you? You're going to pay $2 and get oh, a Steel Reserve. I think you won the lottery there. Yeah. I mean, that's like your best bet. That's what those, yeah, those college kids are definitely winning the lottery on that You won the migraine morning. headache. Oh, man. Congratulations. So the $3 is like your Miller Lite, Bud Light. I mean, it's your typical domestics. Yeah. Uh, and we probably have about 15 different types of beers. And there's some unique stuff. And then uh, your four dollars is which is my favorite. It's it's just beers that we couldn't sell at the warehouse. So a lot of beers from Canada, some beers from California, from Texas, like Shiner Bach, for example. Yeah, Labatt Blue in there. Labatt Blue, right, I, think that's my a, jam. I think that's I think that's a three dollar beer jam. That's nice. a three dollar. Right. <laughs> but uh, like Shiner Bach, I think it's a great beer. Every time I go to Texas, like that is the Texas beer, and you just can't. Nobody in Ohio knows what Shiner Bach is, so. That's a $4 beer, which I, I like having those type of beers in there. And then $5 is my whole cooler. There's about 86 beers on roulette. And some of them are six, seven, eight dollar cans. There's some sours in there. There's some double IPAs, some Imperials that are pretty pricey. And uh, if you're looking for bang for the buck, you know, the $5 is your best bet. Even though it's the priciest one, you might get a better quality beer for a good price. Right. Well, and then as, as for Joe as a business owner, I mean, the fact that you support all these breweries, it kind of brings all these communities into one place, yeah, one exactly. you know where they can they can find all the beers that they love to drink and oh, yeah. have something to do with you know one another that's entertaining and they they're creating memories and you know once you're doing that, I mean that's you're in the right business all around. I agree. Sorry, I didn't mean to. That's all right. <laughs> right. Let's, let's fill up our beers. Topic. We should fill up our beers. Yes. Absolutely. So what we're going to do, guys, right now is we're going to take a quick break. Uh, we'll let you know what's going on in the tap room this week. Um, we'll be right back. We're going to go fill up some beers. Great. Welcome back, 
everybody. We are just shooting shit about, uh, we can swear, Joe. If you have a swear word that you want to oh, drop man. at any point in your life, you don't have to. Now's the time. But, uh, fuck. Is, <laughs> <laughs> is bonk a swear word yet? Bonk! <laughs> Fucking bonk, <laughs> damn it! Uh, Chris, what are you drinking? I am drinking a Juicy Improv. This right. is uh, my beer of choice right now. It's Fantastic. very refreshing IPA. You're rocking nice. a Juicy Improv shirt right now, too, which is I, fitting. Actually, I am. I am. this guy. I, I had three people ask me for this shirt today, too. Dang. And I had to say, not so much. What do you mean? We sell them in the tap room. Oh, well, sure. They come to the tap room. Yeah, they got Did you tell them that, is or that did you just... A free shirt? No, they wanted, they wanted free, oh, free shirts. Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, That's yeah, a special Chris, edition. Chris gets everything that is for free. You can... <laughs> Yeah. So you ask Chris for free stuff all the time? Uh, not not no. too often. Uh, okay. No. Because no. it's illegal. <laughs> Make sure that is clear, folks. We if your salesman is getting you stuff for free. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I asked for something for completely free. This episode is free, though. We're yeah. giving Joe this publicity right here for free. Yeah. Joe, what are you going to get? I'm just kidding. Actually, <laughs> but we're, we're, we're here, to talk, about, we're here yeah. to talk about something. We're here to talk about an event that we're going to do together uh, next week. So we're going to bring Foling to, to the fretboard tap room and explain what we're going to do. Yeah, we're excited about this. First time we've ever done it outside of uh, Foling Warehouse. And we're going to take a couple lanes, bring it to fretboard on a Friday, Saturday night, maybe even a Sunday, depending on how things go. And uh, we're going to bring some Foling here. So... For people that want to have good beer and good fun, we got the per the best collaboration for it. So, should be good. I'm excited about it, and uh, I'll yeah. definitely be here, you know, helping you guys out. Yeah. So, what type of music's uh, being played at at Foley? You got background music. What what yeah. what's going? I mean, is it like hard rock? Because everybody's just getting nuts on the on the on the on the boards. You know. <laughs> yeah, you got to cater to the college kids though That's too. A great question. Sometimes, right? So, yeah, yeah. How does that work? <laughs> it's a little bit of everything and uh, i'll tell you we i don't know if this is a mistake or not from a business standpoint it's been good but from a music standpoint it's been kind of painful as we put touch tunes touch tunes in the warehouse oh, and uh man you get a little bit of everything and it's it can be bad and then you get that that small percentage of people that just mess with you yeah. that uh play baby shark uh or they play <laughs> frosty the snowman or they play a 20 minute fish song yeah, yeah, that's right. that has happened. I am very familiar with all those things, <laughs> yeah. including Baby Shark. Yes, Baby Shark happens to be the most popular song at the warehouse right now. Yeah. And if somebody wants to no. pay me to play Baby Shark in the warehouse, I'm okay with that. Does so everyone start singing Baby Shark? Uh, uh, no, what my bartenders I look at me and they go, "You have to stop this." So luckily, touch tunes. Of course, they you, do. <laughs> they do give you a uh, skip button. So the way touch tunes works is it takes priority over everything. So we have we have Spotify is what we use for music, and the touch tunes take priority. So we have a great Spotify song, and someone throws in two dollars and wants to play whatever song they want. That immediately stops, and their song takes priority. Huh. That's so, what touch tunes does. I, I don't know what this touch tunes is. It's like the little jukebox. It's, it's like a, the digital yeah, jukebox that you just go jukebox. up and you, you put music. In, Do you pay your, monthly for this, or does the yeah, the how does the subscription picking, work for you, How Joe? does it work? No, you don't have to pay a subscription fee, but what's cool about it is, let's say there's 50 songs in front of you, and you want to get your song to the top of the list. You can you can put more money down, and it'll take it to the top of the so list. So ridiculous. So it the person that wants a song is throwing the dollars into the machine. Correct. and No, no, it's all done through an app. So that's the cool Dollars into your app. Uh, oh, it's an app now? It's all an app. Nobody okay. walks up to the machine. It's rare that they walk up to the machine. This is a yeah, crazy, yeah. crazy new world we're living in. Through, man. Yeah. It's crazy. So what, so what are you doing other than, than work? I mean, <laughs> you actually get out and do stuff, other stuff. I, I do. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a marathon runner, so are that's really? kind of my that's big like, thing. Cool. Yeah, I'm trying to run a uh, marathon every state, so I got 15 states knocked that's out. Fantastic. Cool, man. That's awesome. Days. I didn't know that about you. What was that's the last awesome. one you did? Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Uh, in 15, I'm sorry, no, in, in uh, 18, and no, it was last year, it was 19, jeez. But uh, I'm supposed to run the Baltimore Marathon this October, and I'm, I am positive it's going to get canceled. But they just sent us an email saying that uh, as of right now, everything's still on. So, you know, you're in full training mode. You've got to, I mean, to run a marathon, the hardest part's not the race, it's the training. Right. It's like 18 weeks of intense training. So, you know, I know what they're going to do. They're going to wait till the last second. I'm going to waste, you know, six, seven, eight weeks of my yeah, legs. training. So what's your favorite shoe to wear? What's, what's Ooh, your running good shoes? question. I wear uh, the shoe I got on right now, which is a Brooks. The, uh, your Brooks the guy. Ghost 11. 
which is a great shoe. So what was your, uh, what marathon was your PR? New Jersey. What year was that? And roughly? it was uh, 15. 15, okay. So that was a couple kids prior. Yeah. And uh, so my, my ultimate goal is to get the Boston. Okay. If you know anyone that's got the Boston Marathon, I mean, they are a legit runner. Like, yeah. you have to run. Yeah, you got you got to qualify for that. Mm -hmm. One, you have to qualify. In, in a specific, like, I, I guess the Flying Pig is a qual qualifier. is a qualifier for Isn't Columbus Boston, a qualifier, right? too? Correct, yeah. So most major marathons are a qualifier. Yeah. Okay. The problem is, so there's age brackets, so it starts at age 35, and then it's every five years. So I'm, I'm 39. I fall into the 35 and 40 age bracket. And you have to run a three hour and five minute marathon which is like a seven minute mile so that's that's the hard part and then because that's pretty hardcore oh it's it's yeah. crazy it is crazy i mean a seven minute marathon a seven minute mile is impressive doing that for 26, for 26 miles, miles i mean that's ridiculous it's crazy so what are you averaging are you, are you going like 11 11 minute mile. oh no <laughs> No. It's got to be better than that. <laughs> <laughs> the guy was running, look, look at Joe. Jim, yeah. look at you. <laughs> Fat guy in a little coat. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's a, I, I'm at like a 720. Oh, wow. Is my uh, average. That's so. great. So, did you play soccer or any other high endurance I, sport? I ran in high school. I yeah. was cross country track. I wanted oh, to play basketball. Okay. My basketball team was really good and I couldn't yeah. make the cut, but. Um, cross cross country is no joke, man. Yeah, I had cross country friends, and that's I. No, no thanks. I played guitar in high school. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was way more fun. <laughs> He's got picking endurance. Yeah, yes. I got. I got. Yeah, his fingers exactly. are stronger than ever. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, let's continue to talk about music, Joe. This is a question that we've asked everybody who's been on yeah. the show so far. If you had a stage, or if you put live music in the Falling Warehouse, I know that yeah. the acoustics aren't the, aren't the best for live They're music, not. but maybe someday that changes. Um, if you were to have any three bands, dead or alive, your favorite stuff oh, on man. that stage, what bands would you put? That's hilarious. So I grew up in the 90s. He's ready. I can tell. No, I'm not. He, I'm yes, not. Just, he did look at the question earlier. So <laughs> this is the one question I saw earlier. I was like, oh, man. So I was, um, grew up in the 90s. Like, I've been uh, to a ton of different concerts. My first concert ever was Corn Limb Biscuit. Nice. Which you can go back in time. That's like alternative <laughs> rock to the extreme. Right. And my buddy was a big mosh pitter. And we went down to the mosh pit, and I lasted like two seconds, and I was out. I mean, it was it was nasty, <laughs> and I was uh, 50 pounds less than I am now, yeah. and I was 16 years old, and it was bad. So uh, I kind of grew up on that alternative rock. I mean, Green Day was really big, and I love Green Day. Yep. Blink 182 was real popular. Like I, I still follow them. Third Eye Blind was a big band. I would mm -hmm. love to have Third Eye Blind in there. Um, but I like 80s too. Like I like 80s rock a lot. I mean, it is. Cliche as it is, Journey is just a, a band that I just, I think every every song they play is a hit. Yeah. And um, so, though, I mean, I don't have, I don't have three top ones, but I would say anything in the 90s, and we get, we do get bands in the Falling Warehouse, and 90s cover bands, especially 90s like rock, kind of pop rockish. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I really like. That's, that's my go-to. Um, Joe, uh, question from Twitter. Um, who in the world would you like to play a foaling match with and why? I don't know. So against or with? I would Anybody? say against. Yeah, you got to play against someone one-on-one. -on -one. Who are you playing against? One-on-one. -on -one, I mean, if you're looking for celebrities, you got to take on the GOAT, right? Mr. Brady? Tom Brady? Brady? I mean, All right. I would love There's nothing better. <laughs> now, I would if you probably, took him down in two throws. I'd probably go home crying, but I would love to take him on. It's not about throwing the perfect spiral in that game. No, though. it's not. Well, no, that's my and you question. nailed it. So do you think Brady would try to throw a fireball? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you think he would yeah. just throw a beamer. And here's what I'll tell you. But that doesn't matter. Football exactly. players are that's not the best fullers. Right. And, and, and Tom Brady would probably kick my ass. I, I would take it on the chin <laughs> and go home. But baseball pitchers yeah. are, I don't care what level you're at, high school, college, even peewee. Those pitchers are the best bowlers because yeah. you're throwing at that, you know, yeah, right, that, right at that catcher, that's right? It's exactly a strike zone. Angle. Yeah, you're yeah. throwing down. And we've seen a lot of, I will tell you this, and I will not name the quarterback, a very popular quarterback in Cincinnati, not Andy Dalton, which I wish it was Andy Dalton, that uh, it took him 10 throws to hit a pin. What? To hit one pin. 10 throws. 
It does take a little minute to kind of size up the, the length, though. It's I mean, not a natural throw. It's not a – you got to get your distance. But so I used to pitch. I, I played baseball, and I'm, I'm a left-handed pitcher. Randy Johnson was my guy. Yes. Like, oh, wow. You look like Randy was, Johnson. Wow. He looks on. like Randy Johnson. <laughs> I was the tall, like, lanky left-handed pitcher, so I was like, Randy Johnson's my guy. Like, I'm going to try to emulate that. And uh, but still, like I don't want to. I don't want to chuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to chuck the football though. I still, I still, I no, still believe Mitch in has the a walk. nice lob. Like, he's got this. He's got the. He drops it's like, it in. It's more of it's a like basketball thing. Above. I think it's more of my natural like basketball lob where it's just like you know, he's got a nice throw actually. A little, a little clean. There's no right or wrong way. I've seen people throw underhand. But yeah, it's fascinating. Really well. Yes. Yeah. Kyle and I did some underhand this past time. I'd never done it before, but we would start out each match with an underhand. We would take. Five, did you roll it underhand, down. or did you just no, toss just it? No, just loft it up. Just I call so it the referee the ground, toss. It, fell, or it did touch the ground. What's that? Are you rolling it on the ground when you loft? No, 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 you no, no. You not one bit. Un- Throw it right into the center of the the, the mash. Take what you get. You just drop it in. Yeah. We have an employee that plays extremely well underhand. Really, he's one of our best fullers, and uh, it's, it's the way to go. It's like uh, who? Uh, what was his name? John Barry? No, John Barry is one of the sons. Rick Barry. Rick Barry was like the king of the, oh, the potty shot yes. at the free throw line. Yes. The man was just like ninety percent from the free throw line just shooting potty shots. It's yes. the same kind of thing. <laughs> also, I love the term potty shot. I've never heard that term before. Wait, no no either. one's heard the that's term a, potty that's shot. A granny. Okay. That's a granny shot. It's a granny, granny shot. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. It. yeah, it's a granny. I always heard potty shot. I lived across the street as a kid from a um uh group home. It was a it was like a mental institution and uh one of the guys um, probably in his fifties, he didn't really speak at all. He was, he was more or less mute, but, um, his name was John and actually was interesting. He would come across the street and play basketball on the hoop with me. Just master, like mastered the potty shot. I'm like eight <laughs> years old, like shot. seven years old. And this awesome. dude, this like 50 year old guy who just couldn't talk to me would come over and just like nail potty shots. It was amazing. I think about. I honestly, I think about this guy all the time. I don't, I don't know. Awesome. It's just one of those things where like, is... I lived across the street. It was called the Brown House, is what we called it as kids. We were like the Brown House. The Brown House. Because it was just shots. a giant Brown House. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Oh That's man. Great. So all right. Next question from Twitter, from the great Twitter, is uh, Has Joe Burrow been to the warehouse yet? I am trying hard to get Joe Burrow in here, and I actually have a connection. Believe it or not, and this is a very strange connection, but. A neighbor of mine has, I don't know the whole details about this, but he has a practice Bengals player living with him right now. And I don't know the reasons why he's living with him, but he's two doors down from me. And he called me up the other day and said, hey, can you, can you throw the football um, for this guy that's living with me? He's, he's trying, he's trying to uh, play for the Bengals. He's trying out soon. And last year he was on the practice squad. This year he wants to be a full-time wide receiver. So I'm like... All right, yeah. I'm like, I don't have that good of an arm. He's like, you're Fuller. Go, I'm, not, I'm not Joe Burrow. Because, right. Well, funny you say that. Joe Burrow can't play with him for the next two weeks for whatever reason. And he needs someone to throw to him. So I'm like, this is my connection to Joe Burrow. So absolutely, I will, I will do my That's body awesome. shot throw cool. to him if I have that to. Cool. And uh, so I have a small connection now to Joe Burrow. I've not thrown with him yet. He's, I'm waiting for him to... Text me and say, "Hey, I'm ready yeah. to throw. We're gonna go out in the yard and throw." Has this guy been to the warehouse yet? He has not. Right, so well, that's go, part too, two. So that's, yeah, I've already tried that. That has failed. He's had some uh, training stuff going on. Yeah, but that's my only connection to Joe Burrow. So I would, I'm going to get Joe Burrow. If we do this a year from now, and I would love to do it again a year from now, I'm going to tell you that Joe Burrow has been in the warehouse, and that is my, that is my uh, goal, and. I'm, that's my public uh, Joe Burrow piece. at the Falling Warehouse, sponsored by Fretboard Brew. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, there we go. Smoking Maybe a cigar. I'll go, t- I'll go talk to charity. Joe. Uh, you yeah. know Joe? No, but I, I, I mean, I'll go find him. He's going to get in there. It's probably not going to be until. Sniff him out, sales guy. Uh, guess, yeah. It's going to be March. It's going to be the season you. will be over. Listen. This whole COVID thing will be done. Joe Burrow in March. Will be All right. Warehouse. And what I've seen, I, I, so I Googled earlier, I Googled some Joe Burrow stuff, and, and some of the more recent things that he's, he's done, like interviews-wise, he's been drunk during them, supposedly. Well, then he's supposedly. A, he's so this is perfect. So this here's, is perfect. Here's the perfect night for Joe. He comes to Fredboard, <laughs> has an outstanding time, discovers one of the best breweries in Cincinnati, and then he learns that Fredboard is also at Pulling Warehouse. He comes to Pulling Warehouse, drinks Fredboard beer, 
and has a great time. Dang. And tweets, and then tweets he, out both of us. And then, like, Bronson Arroyo, after he's done with his career in, like, 15 years, he's won a few Super Bowls or whatever, he becomes a Bronson, musician. Bronson Arroyo. No, no, no. Bronson Arroyo played baseball. I understand. No, 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 no. But I'm saying Joe Burrow, like, wins some Super oh, Bowls, whatever. Yeah, he has a got successful it. career here in Cincinnati. And then he becomes a, a musician, and he plays our stage, and it's just, like, this this crazy uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. it. Well, guys, uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Joe Frank here from Falling Warehouse once again. Uh, really appreciate you coming through, man. Chris, thank thanks you. for making this all happen. Jim, yes, thanks for chiming in. <laughs> thanks. Everybody, don't forget this uh, Friday and Saturday, July 24th and 25th, we will be here hosting a Falling tournament. Not really a tournament, just free play. We're going to have a couple of boards out here for you guys to enjoy. Get a little bit of experience with the game before you head over to the warehouse and uh, really, really enjoy it over there and, and drink a bunch of bonk beer. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much. There's no more beer in your glasses, but uh, let's just do like a little air cheers. All day. You know? Boom. Cheers. 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 Thanks so much, guys. Thank you for all for viewing. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. Leave a comment. Uh, next week, we are going to do a very interesting uh, episode. It's going to be all female bartenders here at Fretboard. We're going to get the ladies to talk about their experience here behind the bar. It's going to be pretty funny. You're going to have Tiff, <laughs> Kelly, and it Liz. Like trouble. It is trouble. trouble. It's <laughs> going to be trouble. Tune into that one. It might be the most highly uh, viewed episode at the end of the day, but Joe here, we're going to break the bank. Gus, you're going down, buddy. You got the number one spot until uh, this episode comes out. See you, man. Bye, guys. <laughs>